Industry Insider coming to you from the Melbourne Airport. It's all for Music Victoria and the City of Melbourne. It's the Airplay Pilot Project for 2012. And joining me, Mick Thomas. How are you, mate? Not bad, yourself? Not too bad. Uh, you've, uh, you've, you've played a lot of gigs in your life. What's this one like for you? Uh, it's certainly one of the weirder ones, but uh, uh, gigs a gig and you've got you to play them for what they're worth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's the response like with people like rushing in and out and getting cabs and seeing yeah. this full set up band out the front of the, uh, the venue? Uh, well, the venue. Well, it is the venue. It's the venue. venue. It's if the venue you play and it's a venue. Um, it's kind of surprised and bemused, I think, more than anything. You know, a few bills that have seemed to enjoy it, you know, sold a few CDs. I don't know. It's, a, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what did you think when you were asked to be one of the inaugural artists for the uh, Airplay Pilot Project? Oh, it's good. I mean, I'm sort of always up for anything that's new or different. And, you know, I think you were trying to send out a pretty strong message about what the city is and, you know, just what we're trying to achieve. It's, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to. Uh, Kind of fit in with you know, let's see, let's just see what happens. We give something to try. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, now you've just you've just come off a tour in October with uh, Mick Thomas and the Roving Commission. Or are you still going? Um, you had an October tour, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did. We did. Um, no, uh, yeah, well, I, did, I did a tour in, in basically in Europe. You know, yeah. So that was yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, and we did a, a t uh, album tour here earlier in the year. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're, it's. Um, was that in? Uh, was that? Was uh, was that in support of the seven-inch vinyl? Yes, no, we bought out the seven-inch uh, when we went overseas. But okay. no, no, it was just just to really you know, say we had a record out, we had a bunch of new songs, and you know, we had a really good tour here. And then it was just me and Wally went overseas because it's pretty, you know, it's, it's it costs some money, you know. But uh, no, they're, they're both good tours, and yeah, well, I'm just enjoying sort of having the freedom to, you know, play a whole lot of new stuff or old stuff or whatever I feel like, really. But. Yeah, we've got an album that we're pretty happy with and we're pretty proud of. So, you know, they're, they're good, and they're good songs to play. It was a, an album recorded you know, pretty quickly and pretty naturally, you know. I mean, I, I don't sort of subscribe to that thing that album has to be recorded totally live or anything like that, but it was recorded in such a way we didn't so agonise too much over it. So generally, when you do that, you find you've got a record that's reasonably easy to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. It is an airport. People are going to walk through the interview. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's all right, buddy. <laughs> It's an airport, that's what's going to happen. That's, huh? right, that's, that's, right. that's it. It's, a, it's like a gig, and a, you know, that's why you never interview in band rooms, because people just walk past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, what's happening uh, for the rest of the year with, uh, with, with yourself, Matt? You've got, a, you've got a lot on. I mean, you can go to mickthomas.com and just check everything out. There's a million things happening. Yeah, there's stuff going on. Um, basically, the weddings are going to play next Tuesday to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. At the EG Awards. At yeah. the EG Awards, and that's pretty much it for the weddings for a while, you know? I mean, you never say never, but... I, I, it's got an air of finality about it, you know. Uh, Dave Steele's coming back to play, who was on the first album, and we're going to perform that first album through. And it's just a lot of little sort of things of synchronicity that are going to work for that gig, like the fact that they wanted to, us to play that album at the awards, and Janine Hall, who was with the band at the time, was no longer alive, and, yeah. and so we accepted the award on her behalf for um, support act and. That makes her and Jen Anderson, who's currently in the band, the first two women to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, which is kind of a nice thing, you know. And um, I just think it's it's just a good time to, to sort of wind it all up, really. Mm -hmm. So that, um, that's basically it. I'll do some more gigs just with the Raven Commission just to finish off the year for, for Christmas and then sort of look to next year, really. See but, what yeah. next year brings. Yeah, I've got a few, a few ideas. A few things up your sleeve? Yeah. yeah Beauty. Things. Looking forward to that. And uh, well, just just to just to wrap it up, mate. Um, what, where do you think this is going to this is going to head? I mean, being the initial thing, it's a, it's an early call. It's like asking an artist, how do you think the record's going to go when it's been out a week? But you know, what, what where do you see this heading? This this airplay pilot project. Well, I just think it could be something that's pretty natural. You know, like like they'll just work out the way of getting it right where the band's playing. You know, there's a lot of people in an airport at any given point in time. There's a couple of thousand people, mm -hmm. probably thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so there's people to play to, you know. So uh, I think it's just like a, you know, I keep saying it, but it's just sending out this message that we've got music here, that there's music going on, and uh, I don't think it can hurt the city at all, you know, just to for to, people to arrive and just hear music being played, and um, you know, I'm, I'm sure they'll rejig it constantly about where the bands play and how they play and, and what what they do. But um, I, I think it's, you know, if you look at those cities like. Um, you know, where I think the idea came from, like Austin, Texas, and Nashville, or 
or yeah. New Orleans, those cities do really well out of music. And I, and I think more than anything, you're trying to convince politicians that arts in general, um, music in particular, is is not just something they should do out of some, you know, some misguided sense of conscience yeah. about culture, but maybe they can have that as well, but that, that it's actually financially really viable. And I, I know that to, to the analogy, say, with small country towns, the towns that embrace, uh, that have really strong arts projects and strong arts committees and arts societies are the towns that are kicking on. You know, I mean, we just did a tour of, of regional centres in Victoria and you could just tell the towns that, that, that have had people out there, you know, the Lyrebird Arts, I mean, you know, you go down to Gippsland and the town that's kicking on is Manion. And it's um, <laughs> airport. It's an airport. Keep going. That's right. And the town's kicking on is Minion, right? And Minion's got a really strong arts council, like Lyrebird Arts Council. They do really well. So you've got this situation where, you know, say a Nico Case or a, a um, Gillian Welch or, or Justin Towns Earl are putting in their, their Australian tour and they go, yeah, we're going to play here in Sydney, we're going to play there in Melbourne, and we're going to do Minion Town Hall. And you go, oh, well, that's just a gig. But the fact is, you drive through those towns on the way to Gippsland, and the town that's really happening is Minion, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, and that's case in point, that if you look after your arts, you, you're looking after people, and you're looking after what people do and do with their lives and with their dollar. And I, I think the same goes for those those cities, you know, that we're talking about in the States, that really sell themselves as music cities. Those cities do really well, and Melbourne's got a really strong music culture, a strong music history. And there's been very few of the people take note of that at a political level. And so, if nothing else, this could sort of send out this idea that, you know, hey, Melbourne, music city, a music town, you know, and, and, and so that, and that crosses over to theatre, and, and you know, fine arts and fashion and whatever. You know, the idea that Melbourne's a city where people do things and get things done. And, you know, I think it probably puts us ahead of some other cities, you know. Yeah. So I, I reckon that's a really good, strong, positive message to send out to, your, uh, to the people up the stairs. Yeah, know? absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, Mick Thomas, thank you very much for joining yeah, us yeah. here. I know uh, we've just taken, a, taken you away from your 20-minute break, so we'll give you the last 10 minutes yeah. at least. Good idea. Like I said before, any more information, mickthomas.com. Uh, and it's all for the uh, it's all for Music Victoria and the City of Melbourne for the uh, Airplay pilot project for 2012.